In this video, we're gonna go through how you can start using DAX in Power BI. We're gonna break this down together step by step using examples. And I'm also gonna demonstrate to you some of the tips that I picked up along the way to make your DAX journey a lot easier. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where I focus on teaching beginners the wonderful world that is Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So to not be too rambly about the definition, uh, DAX is the expression language that is used in Power BI and it's used to create advanced calculations through measures. You'll be using DAX mainly for creating measures. Measures are sort of dynamic calculations that understand context. Uh, I'll expand to that in a little bit. So to explain things even better, let's go through the example that I prepared for you today. So here we have a very bare bones Power BI desktop file and we already have some data imported in here which comes from an Excel file that I have on my desktop and this file has some people data, so information about people's name and email, gender, things like this. And to start with something simple, let's try to create a count measure. So at the beginning, we want to just count the number of people that we have in this table. In order to do that, we'll need to click the new measure here. That will open up the DAX formula bar where we need to write our DAX calculation. Now, a quick tip that I can give here is um, if this formula bar is too small for you, what you can do is hold control and do the scroll bar. To zoom in that will make your measure your formula bar a lot bigger so that's a quick one so first what you need to do is you would need to name your measure so let's name this one let's do count of people and it doesn't matter if there are any spaces we'll do an equals and after the equals is where you would write your DAX functions so we decided that we're going to write the count uh, measure right so we will need to use the count function so we'll type count and you'll see that as I type there's a, there's this drop down menu it's called the IntelliSense and it it kind of guesses what you you will write and it's mainly to make your DAX writing a lot quicker without you don't have to write the whole DAX function what is also useful is it gives you some context, it gives you some information about what each of these um, functions do. So if you didn't know what they did, this will give you a quick understanding of how you should be using them. So let's keep typing count. And you'll see now that we found our column, uh, our, our function. So this is what it says. It says it counts the numbers in a column and you can also see on the hints it says that you need to put a column name inside the brackets now what does that mean now because count is a function it means that it's a command and the command returns the value so the value that it returns is the count but in order to do the count it needs to have a parameter and the parameter that it's asking for is a column name so you need to in essence give this function a um, a column before it can return you the count so and you need to do that by putting the column name inside the open and close brackets here so um, let's try to put something here right so let's open the bracket and you'll see that it gives you the intelligence switches from uh, showing you the functions to showing you the different columns that you can use available for you in your data model. So in this case, we will look for the ID. And to avoid having to write this, I'm, I'm using the arrow keys here, and to avoid writing all of this, all you need to do is select the one that you want to use and hit tab. That will autofill everything that you want to use from the IntelliSense, which is great because I don't like writing everything um, one by one. And then we'll close this. So hit enter and now you'll see on the model on the right hand side you have created your first measure and you'll know that it's a measure because it has a calculator icon right next to it so we can use it by simply dragging it into the our report view let's put it in a card and here you go so you now have the count of the people count of the rows 
within your people data. So that seems pretty easy, right? So let's, uh, let's put it in a table just so that I can show you something else. So now it's giving us, we have a thousand people in this count. Now, if we drag in gender, for example, in this table, you'll see that this count understands that it needs to be split against gender that we have here. So you see it automatically splits the 1000 count that we have across all the different genders that we have uh, in our data set. And this is something that we call row context in measures. So measures in essence, they are dynamic in that they are able to detect or recalculate based on the type of context that you put them in. In this case, because we put them in the context of gender, what it does is for each row, it calculates the count, so it does the count, but only for that specific context. So for example, for a gender, it does the count, but it only does for a gender. Same thing with bi gender, with female, uh, and so on and so forth. So nothing like the calculated columns where they're static. Let's try to create another measure so I can demonstrate you something else. So let's go back to our people data. Let's right click and new measure. And let's say we wanted to see what is the percentage of these counts against the whole, right? So we will do count percentage equals, and we will now try to do a, um, an arithmetic operation. So measures can also um, use, you can also use arithmetic operations with them. So what do I mean by that? So for example, we want to do the let's try count again and we will do id again and now we will do a division against this value so we want to divide it by a thousand hit enter and now let's bring this into our table once again and let's just change that into a percentage not that one we need to highlight count percentage and then change that into a percentage. So now that gives us the percentage of a specific gender across, um, across the different genders. And you're not limited to using the division. You can also use other arithmetic functions available to you in DAX. If you're interested in learning more about what the different kinds of operators that you can use, I actually created a video about it. So check it out if you haven't yet. So let's try to modify this measure that we created just a little bit, right? So we can see that we have a function here. We have the count function but what we don't want to do is we don't want to keep rewriting the same function every single time if we've already created it because we know we already have a measure called count of people that already does this but what you can do with different measures is you can you can reference other measures as well so instead of rewriting this one you can just reference the measure that you've already created so if we delete this and if I start typing count, you'll see that as part of its the IntelliSense's um, recommendations is also our measure here. So we'll just tab here and if I hit enter, you won't see any difference because it does the exact same thing. It, it, it does the count of people against the 1000. So it will give you the same value as we did before, except that you're not recreating DAX functions again and again. Another best practice that I could give you at this point is to not use the division like this. And that's because if you divide by zero, um, this is prone to give you some really interesting results. So let me just show you what I mean by that. So if I delete and let's put it to zero, you see that it gives us infinity, which is expected but obviously if you have an error like this your any other functions or measures that depend on this measure would most likely break so we want to use a, a much more cleaner much more safer way to divide our values so we'll try to use a function called divide so let's try to do that so let's let's delete what we have so far and let's start typing divide so you see here, if I hit tab, it will open up uh, the, this specific function for us. And you'll see it looks a little bit different to count. It asks for more parameters. 
Um, so let's let's see. It says that it safe divide function with ability to handle divide by zero k's. So this function is specifically created to make sure that we handle infinity uh, results such as this. Um, and this is kind of the best practice way of dividing your values together. So let's start with our numerator. Uh, at the moment we had the count of people, right? Comma. And we had a thousand. And after the denominator, if I click comma, you see we have the third parameter, which is the alternative result. Now this means that um, instead of infinity, we can decide what this result should be. So in this case, um, instead of infinity, we will just put zero, but it can be anything you want. And let's, so let's close this now and hit enter. So now you will see that fixes the values that we have here on the count percentage. And then if we have the same scenario before where we're dividing it by zero, you see that instead of infinity, it returns zero, which is sort of what we would expect. And this is what we want to see. So what I want to show you next is a way for you to use functions within functions. So essentially nesting functions. And this is where the power of DAX measures comes in, right? You, you're able to create, you know, complex measures based on different functions that are working together. So at the moment we have the denominator a thousand and we know that it's a thousand because we have the count here but what if we didn't know that we have a thousand maybe we want this to be dynamic right so maybe uh, when we get a new value we want to make sure that we are getting whatever the maximum value is and then dividing it against the count of people for that context now this is where we can use the all function and actually i covered it in a previous video um, but essentially what it does is it ignores row context um, and let me demonstrate to you how to do that so if we delete the a thousand here let's type all so you see this function if i hit tab it asks for a table name or a column name. We can use it a number of different ways and I cover it quite deeply in, in one of my previous videos. So um, check it out if you haven't yet, but let's look at the description here. So it returns all the rows in a table or all the values in a column, ignoring any filters that might have been applied. So it's exactly what I was saying. It ignores any type of context that you have. So, in, so instead of checking to see what type of gender it needs to use, you actually are ignoring all of those and you're just doing a count for everything. Now, the problem with this function is that this function returns a table. So it means that it returns a set of values and not a single value like count or, or divide. So what we need to do is we need to use a function that parses a table type value. So um, let's not use all here, but instead let's use another function first. So let's use a count rows. So count rows counts the number of rows in a table and all it needs is a table. So it's perfect because we want to have the all, uh, we want to use the all function that returns a table. Let's close this and inside it, let's just make some space here and let's put all here and let's put an open and here we need to define the table or column name so you can use either a table or a list of columns in this case we will just use the people data the table just the table and let's close that and if you hit enter you see that it now gives us the values that we expect, except that we're not hard coding the 1000 as our denominator. Instead, we are doing a separate function that counts the number of people. And that's what we use for our calculation. Now at the moment we are doing quite simple calculations, but obviously over time you will need to write more complex measures than this. And that means you will have more functions and it can be unreadable at times. So how can you kind of format this to, you know, make it look a lot more readable? So typically what you could do is you could use out 
enter to create a new line so if we for example here we do a divide we want to hit alt enter from here and we want to say we want to show here on the next line so we'll do a tab so we can see exactly what the nominator is and then we will do another alt enter tab and then we will do a other one here and that's the alt results and then we'll do another one alt enter so that kind of organizes your DAX measure to kind of be more readable and not just all in one line, right? And another thing that I don't see a lot of people use is using commenting. Now commenting is pretty much like side notes uh, and doesn't affect the calculation that you have provided. It just provides any context to your code um, for anybody that would be using this or maybe for yourself in the future in case you've written a very complex calculation and you want to know what it does um, easily so how you can do that for example let's do it on the denominator here if we do a double dash you'll see that it turns green so here it means that it's a comment so we'll do here count ignores context so it won't affect your calculation at all but it make sure that next time you open this and you wonder what this function does it gives you uh, a little bit of comment there finally if you have a function that you want to use but you don't know exactly how to use it and you want some more guidance beyond the intellisense microsoft has created a really really useful uh, reference document online which gives you a lot of information about each of the functions that you could use as well as some examples so let's see what the divide function looks like in dax so divide dax if we click on the article here on the microsoft docs it gives us information about this specific uh, dax measure it gives us some description here how the syntax looks like the parameters and what they do and um, we see that the alternative result is actually optional so you don't need to provide this which gives information about what it returns uh, and a few examples which is really useful especially if you wanted to know uh, what the behavior would be if you did specific things right and that's it for this video i hope it helps you understand how to use dax functions with your measures in power bi if you want to use the files that i used in this video i'll leave a download link in the description box below if you have any feedback or any more questions let me know in the comment section box below Get in touch using the social media links that I included in the description box below. And thank you so much for watching, guys. See you again on the next one.